Hi, it's Samantha from Samantha by Design. Welcome to my channel and to my first ever YouTube tutorial. I'm so happy that you could be here and I appreciate you so much. Today we're going to be painting a beautiful sunset in acrylic specifically for beginners or for people who have never painted a sunset before and just want to give it a shot. We'll be going through the materials, all of the steps so that at the end you could have a beautiful painting that you're proud of. Let's get started. All right, first things first, I am using an 8x10 canvas board. It is gessoed and primed and ready to go, so I don't have to do anything to it. You can use a normal canvas. I'm just using a board because it's easier for storage purposes. Um, an 8x10, you can scale it up if you want to do it this bigger to a 16x20, and it'll match up perfectly. I'll also be providing the reference image in the description below and a gridded version of it if you wanted to draw out the little buildings and such. Um, so canvas is taped down to my table so that it won't go anywhere while I'm painting. You're also going to need a jar of water to clean out your brushes and to help your acrylic flow because acrylic does work with water. It is water-based. I'll be using quinacridone magenta. White, of course. Titanium white. Dioxazine purple and also ultramarine blue and cadmium yellow medium hue. So this is what we'll be working on today. I have provided the reference image in the description and I've also provided you the gridded version in case you wanted to make sure all your measurements were exact. And again, this is for an 8x10 canvas or a 16x20 if you want the measurements to be exact. You're also going to need a paper towel to dry off your brushes or wipe them off or an old tea towel. Just make sure that if you're using like a hand towel or something, even your water cup, don't use them for anything other than acrylic. There are some metals and pigment stuff in here, chemicals that, that you don't want around your food or your face or your hands or whatever. Um, you're not going to die if you get some on your hands, so don't worry. All right, so I'm going to put out my paint. I'm using a foam plate so that if I don't use all my paint, I just put it in a big Ziploc, uh, spray a little bit of water, and then it keeps in the fridge for a while. So I'll put out some ultramarine blue. I'm almost out of that and some quinacridone magenta. We'll also put out some white. Whoops. We'll put out some purple for the buildings. Now you could use any pink, blue, purple, yellow, and white that you have. Um, just make sure that you do test the color mixes first, and I'll show you why as soon as I'm done with this. So I pulled out two of my favorite colors. So I have phthalo blue and also cadmium red medium. Okay, so you learned in school that you can mix blue and red together and that it would make purple. But you have to understand that in acrylic paints, there are undertones, and this is a green blue. And this is like an orangey red. So these colors are actually contrasts and won't make a nice purple. Let me show you what I mean. I'm just going to put out a little bit. That was not a little bit. <laughs> That's okay. And then a little bit of blue. So you can also see that this blue, I'll put, put it up here there, is also very different than this blue over here. So here's two colors that definitely will not make a nice purple. So let me grab a paintbrush and show you what I'm talking about. So I'm just going to wet my brush, wipe off the excess water. You don't want it to be dripping. If you test it on your hand and your hand is dripping, you have too much water on your brush and you should probably wipe it off. So if we take this blue, like what a beautiful blue, and this red, and you're trying to make purple, look what's happening. We'll add some white so that you can see that this most certainly did not make a purple color. It made a weird gray-blue color. 
But that's, we don't have that in our reference image and we don't want it for our sunset to be frank. <laughs> so let's avoid that. So maybe just color test beforehand to make sure that your colors actually do make a purple. And I'm gonna show you the difference with the other color. So here we have the ultramarine blue and the quinacridone magenta. And when you mix these two together, you can already see a huge difference. This 100% makes a beautiful purple color. And you're like probably wondering, why aren't you just using this purple? Well, dioxazine purple is a good replacement for black. It is one of the darkest acrylic pigments you're gonna find apart from black, but it's just a different purple. So you can just use this one if you'd like. They're just slightly different. And by mixing my own purple, I can make it more pink or more blue. But I definitely wanna avoid this. You see the difference here? We want this kind of purple, not this. All right, so now that we understand that and you've tested your colors, it's also important to note that on our reference, there is some yellow and now we also want to avoid mixing yellow and purple because that'll make a brown and we also don't want that. So let me just move my paints here and move this to the side and we're going to take a look at our reference together. All right, so we see this. We're going to start off with yellow because it is a transparent color and we're going to just put that down on our canvas and then we'll make our way up. So let's get started. I'll be using a one inch bright brush. You can use whatever brush you are comfortable with. This just happens to be one of my favorite brushes. Use a brush that's big enough for your canvas and not too small because acrylic does tend to dry fast and you don't want it to dry out while you're blending. So we're going to take a little bit of our cadmium yellow medium or whatever yellow you chose and we're going to add a little bit of white to it and we are going to make sure that we get a nice color that we're happy with that's really pretty and then we are going to go ahead and take the cat hair off our canvas <laughs> We're going to put this in. I'm using crisscross motions. Now what you're trying to do is cover all of the little white dots that are on your canvas. You want your paint to flow nicely. We're just gonna grab a little bit more white and we're just gonna work this up and to the side. So I'm about a thumb's height from the bottom and I'm gonna take this all the way to the edge and a little bit past the halfway mark of our canvas and I'm just making sure I'm covering all of the spots. Now this yellow with the quinacridone magenta makes a super beautiful orange color so we're going to mix that up and make a nice orange color and we're going to go around the yellow Don't worry about blending it yet. We'll get there, don't you stress. I am working fairly quickly because acrylic does dry fast and we wanna have that blending time. So I just want a little bit of orange here. You could take it into the yellow. And now what I'm gonna do is take a clean, soft brush and I'm just going to blend this together. Wipe it off. So that, I have a beautiful transition. And don't worry, we'll be doing another layer. So this, it's okay, this is an ugly stage in acrylic painting, they all have an ugly stage. Just trust the process, it'll be awesome in the end. And you can even use your finger. I am notorious for blending with my fingers. <laughs> it's just so much fun. I'm just gonna grab a bit more yellow. If you have any allergies, please don't finger paint. I've just been doing this for a while, so I know that I'm not allergic to my paint, so that I can do this. But don't do this if you do have allergies. 
Okay, and again, don't worry, this is just layer one. It's gonna look like a hot mess before it looks good. Now we are going to grab more pink and way less yellow because we're gonna wanna start transitioning into our blues and stuff soon and we don't want any yellow in our blue because it'll make a green. So we're just going to, a oh, little chunk, blend this out, add more white, take it all the way to the bottom. You can even take it up into the orange a little bit. Now when we're blending, I'm getting most of the paint off of my brush before I'm blending. So I'm just gonna use my finger, but you can use your brush. Again, do not use your fingers if you have allergies. All right. Now we will be adding clouds. And we'll take a little bit up here and we're, we're gonna add a little bit more white. And there's a little bit of pink in the middle. But again, we will do another layer, so don't stress about it. I'm telling you, it looks like a hot mess right now, and it's supposed to. So now I'm gonna rinse my brush off and make sure that there is no more pigment on it. So when I'm wiping it off on my napkin, there's no paint coming off of it, okay? And now what we're gonna do is grab our ultramarine blue and we're gonna add a little bit of white and it's okay if some paint gets into it, that's fine. There we go, so this is the shade we're looking for. And we're gonna go around the pink and we're gonna be careful not to take it into the yellow. Because we don't wanna make a green color. Grab a little bit more paint. Now I am working with a brush that's damp. And now we're just going to continue with the blue all the way to the top. And make sure that we are not leaving any white holes like this. You want to cover the whole canvas. And if it's not covering, don't worry, we have another layer to go. So no stress. And this is only layer one. I'm working on what I can see in the background. So I could definitely see the yellow, some pink, and then into an orangey color to blue. We'll work on the clouds in a minute. Don't stress about that yet. It's all about layers in acrylic. So I'm just gonna continue putting this blue on here. You can smooth it out side to side. It's really up to you and what you're comfortable with. Now again, we will be doing another layer, so I'm not very worried about brush strokes showing and stuff right now. Now I'm gonna wipe off my brush to get most of the pigment off. And I'm just going to go over this and just blend it a little bit. Making sure I don't touch the yellow. Now wipe it off again. And then go over this. All right, and our base color is in, and I'm telling you guys, it's going to look like a hot mess. Just trust the process, because right now you're probably wondering, does this lady even know how to paint? The answer is yes, I've been doing this for like six, seven years now, so I do know how. And now what we're gonna do is we're going to either let this dry on its own or we can blow dry it. I'm just gonna use a little mister bottle here to keep my paints from drying out. And I'm going to dry my painting. Sorry guys, with a hair dryer. If you're impatient like me and you don't like waiting for it to dry, a hair dryer is perfect. Um, just use it on the coolest setting. You don't want any heat because acrylics can color shift. 
and keep it far away, keep it moving, and make sure it's on the cool setting. So I'm gonna go ahead and blow dry this, so um, I will be right back. All right, our canvas is completely dry to the touch. You don't want any sticky parts. You don't want paint to come off on your hand. I went ahead and changed my water because it was looking gross, and I also washed my brushes with soap and water real quick because it's not good to leave them in the water. I misted my palette once again to keep it wet, and now we are going to start on layer two, which is going to be refining these colors, making sure our blends are a little nicer, and uh, yeah, so let's get started. I will grab, let's see, um, a scruffy brush. You can get these at Walmart. It is a 3 sixteenths of an inch. It is a stiff bristle, which is what we want because we will be scrubbing around. So if you have a brand new, super nice brush that's super soft, maybe don't use it because it might ruin it. And again, we are going to start with our lightest color, which is yellow and we'll add some white. So this is what I'm doing here. Okay, and you don't need a whole lot of paint on your brush. And we are just going to start refining the yellow. So I will start scrubbing in small circular motions everywhere that I want to make sure the yellow is covering more. Grab some more paint. The bottom of our reference is pretty yellow, so I'm going to use less white for this part here. And make sure there's not a whole lot of paint on your brush. And we're just going to blend, 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 blend. And just refine those colors and make sure our yellow is where we want it before we start adding clouds on top. So we're just going to scrub. We can add some more white in some spots. See, if you add too much white, that's fine. Just wipe your brush off and just blend it slowly. I like to use circular motions because if it ends up looking like a cloud, that's a happy little accident like Bob Ross would say. And you don't want to blend in one spot for too long because acrylic does dry fast and what happens as it starts to dry is that it can lift off of the canvas. And we want to avoid that. So don't stay in one spot too long. If it's not looking right the way you want it, just let it dry and come back to it. So on our reference, there's a little bit more yellow right here as well. So we're just going to blend, 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 blend. You want to avoid any harsh edges. Those are harder to cover. We'll grab some more yellow, more white. And then there's some down here. We're just going to drag it across. A little bit more white for coverage because yellow is fairly transparent. And we're just going to keep doing this until our background looks the way we want it to look. No pressure, no stress, it's fine if this is your first painting ever. I don't want you to hate your experience, so just have fun with it, relax, everything is going to be fine. Alright, I think I'm done with the yellow. I might bring it out a little bit more. to the side here, blend a little bit like this, okay there we go, now we're going to, um, we, you don't have to rinse your brush out actually, but maybe make sure that it stays a little bit damp because you don't want the paint to dry on your brush, because then it'll be very hard to clean and you might ruin it, so we're going to grab a little bit of pink and mix it with our yellow to make a super light orange. And we are going to look at our reference and see that, this is really hard to see, but there are some little orange parts. If you look at your reference image, just try to paint what you see in the clouds or just look at this, pause, take some screenshots, it's totally fine. And I'm not worried about the bottom part here because we will be adding buildings. So don't stress too much about the bottom. So I'm just going to add a little bit of orange color around the yellow. Maybe down here. And it's okay to deviate from your reference image if you don't want any orange or you don't want yellow at all. You don't have to add it. It's your painting. 
you can do whatever makes your heart happy. So see now it's like a little bit harsh. So I'm going to add more yellow, more white, and we're just going to blend those two together while it's still wet. And make some little baby cloud shapes. We can add a little bit more orange down here. Blending up into the yellow and make some clouds. Now as I'm doing this, I'm looking at my reference image and I'm thinking to myself, like, do I want to add this? Is it going to do anything for my piece? And I think it will, so I'm just going to keep doing this. Wipe off the brush. Blend, blend, blend. All right. Now I will rinse off and I did take off a yellow part that I wanted to leave pretty yellow. So no big deal, we're just gonna add it again. So we're gonna grab our yellow, grab some white, and just put our yellow right back in. That's the fun part with acrylic is that you can layer it. So if you take something away, you can just put it right back and just keep fidgeting with it until you are happy with your painting. All right, nice bright yellow spot. And now I'm just gonna just scrub the color off my brush and there we go. Now we are going to rinse off again. Wipe the brush off on the paper towel. You don't want it to be soaking wet, okay? Just damp. And now we are going to do a light pink. So we have our pink here. And we are going to add quite a little bit of white to it. And notice that I'm grabbing my paint from the side and I'm not putting my brush directly in the middle of the paint plop. This is for paint management purposes and your paint will go a lot further if you do this. So I'm going to get it quite light and I'm going to keep going. We're going to add some more pink around here. like this, then there's some in the orange. Blend the bottom. Take it up the sides. Use what's left on my brush to scrub down here so that I can get some nice edges up here. Ooh, that's pretty. All right, and grab some more white. Our pink does extend to the end. That's a little too light, so we'll just add some more pink on top, wipe off our brush, and blend. So we're going to extend that over top of our blue, right off to the edge. Clouds are irregular. You don't want to make them like floop, 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 like when you learned how to draw. So it's fine that they're irregular shapes. The bottom's kind of faded out. Just have fun with it. It doesn't have to look exactly like mine. If I were to paint this again, it wouldn't look the same. Now, if you look at your reference, there's definitely pink in the yellow. That's a little dark, so we'll add some white. And we are going to blend this. I hope you guys are having fun with this. It's looking amazing so far. The people on my Facebook group actually voted for this. And if you'd like to be part of the Facebook group, I will leave it in the description below so that you too can participate. Grab a little bit more darker pink, and we're going, we're going to blend upwards, closer to the blue. And take this into the yellow again. Fade out this edge so that there's no hard lines. It's a little bit more pink over here. There we go. 
And then we're going to grab some lighter pink again. I'm going to mist my palette. And we are going to add a little bit more to the top. So this is a little bit of a darker pink. And we're just going to blend that over the top over the blue, keep making those circular motions, okay, there we go, uh, maybe a little bit more over here as well, just whatever is left on your brush, just scrub it off into the blue, you can't go wrong here, it's a sunset, they're beautiful no matter what, we just want to make sure that we're keeping our colors nice and vibrant. So our yellow is a little too bright for my liking. It's a little too yellow. It's not very cohesive with the piece. If you like yours like that, leave it like that. I'm not telling you to change your piece. If you like it like that, please just leave it. I'm going to also put more white out because I have none left. Oops. There we go. So I'm just going to make my yellow a little bit lighter. And to do so, I'm just going to go right back over it. No stress. There we go. We'll leave some of the bright yellow so that it looks like the sun's beaming directly down on it. Might even add a little bit more yellow in other places where I would like some. Like maybe down a little bit more. And keep your shapes irregular, blend, blend, blend. You don't want any hard edges. I definitely recommend a scruffy brush for this part. Wipe my brush off, oh, throw my brush. <laughs> and just blend, 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 blend. You're just scribbling at this point. If you can scribble, you can paint this. And now I'm gonna rinse my brush off because I don't want any yellow left on it. And I'm also going to dry my painting because I don't want to accidentally get yellow into my blue. So again, using my hair dryer on the cool setting or you can just let yours dry naturally if you are a patient person. <laughs> I just happen not to be so I'm just going to dry it and be right back. Alright, so this is completely dry now. And if you look again at your reference... There's not that much blue on there, but there definitely is a little bit. So what we're going to do now is work on those blue bits. So I'm going to grab my ultramarine blue. You use whatever blue you decided to go with. And I'm going to add quite a bit of white because it is light in our picture. This is about the color I'd like. Maybe a bit more blue. We can always alter it and tweak it. And... We are going to start adding in the blue bits. So there's definitely one right here, about halfway, maybe a bit more white. And we are going to blend that into this. This is why I wanted my yellow to be dry because I am going into the yellow with the blue. And if it was still wet, it would be turning green and we definitely don't want that. Not for this painting anyways. There we go. So now we have a blue bit. We might take some a little bit over here. A little bit up here. A little bit more blue on my brush. A bit more white. And there's also one right over here. A little blue spot in the clouds. So I'll add that. Make sure we get a second coat on there. Just getting rid of all the streaks. Definitely right over here. And we're going to take this up diagonally almost to the top of the canvas. And you're probably not, very, not really seeing much of a difference on your canvas. We're just getting rid of the streaky parts. So see how this is streaky, but the parts where we went over with the same blue color, we have more coverage. Because acrylic does require layers in order to do what we'd like it to. So a bit more blue and white. Maybe we'll take some over here. And 
there's a little bit up here. So just keep looking at your reference. Check back every now and then. You don't have to paint exactly what's on your reference. It's okay to deviate from it, like I said at the beginning. We're going to also take some blue down here. Scrub. And I'm also going to note that there's not a lot of paint on my brush. If you had a lot, it would be a, like it'd be harder to manage. And I want you to have a nice painting experience. So don't put a huge blob of paint on your brush. Just start with less than what you think you need and just go from there. Oh, see how there was more white on my brush there? I'm just going to go with it. That's fine. Just add that in. Pull in a little bit of blue towards the yellow. Maybe up into this little other part here. Clouds are really fun to paint because you can't paint them wrong. As long as you're having fun and it's making you happy, that's all that matters. And now you're probably still wondering why it's looking like a hot mess still. Well, this is only layer two and we got a little bit more to go. <laughs> So we're going to add a little bit lighter blue. I'm just going to dampen my brush and then wipe it off on my paper towel because I don't want the paint to dry. So a little bit of a lighter blue. Make some funky cloud shapes. Maybe take some down here. See, that's not in the reference, but I want to add it. So I'm just going to do that. And then there's like a hint of blue in the pink here. So I'm just going to very lightly add some in. Just right on top, let the pink show through so it looks like the sky has many layers because it would. And we're just gonna blend this pink edge as well with whatever's left on the brush. And now there's no blue down here on the reference, but if you feel like your painting needs blue down there, please go ahead and do it. Add a little bit more blue. And blend, blend, blend. That's a little too dark. See that? That's fine. Just grab some white, put it on top, wipe your brush off, and just blend those two together. I chose this one as the beginner tutorial because you really can't go wrong with it. All right. And now we're going to rinse off our brush and we are going to, believe it or not, <laughs> dry this again. So I'll be right back. All right, you see how my water's murky? I'm going to want to do the purple clouds next, so I'm going to go rinse off my brush and also change my All right, we are back. My water's changed, my brush is clean. And now what we're going to work on, if you look at your reference picture, is all of the purple clouds that are kind of taking up a third of the canvas. If you split your canvas into three, the purple clouds are mostly up here. So we put the blue up here to have a base color underneath because if you notice there is some blue peeking through so now we have a base color at least and we are going to make our purple using our ultramarine blue and our magenta and we are going to add a little bit of white see that's a little too blue for my liking so I'll add a little bit of pink you don't even need to mix your whole batch right now because it's fine if your purple has a little bit more blue or a little bit more pink as we go along. So I'm going to test the color and that's pretty good. So we are going to just start working on purple clouds. So the same technique we were using before, we're just going to scrub in a circle. We don't have a lot of paint on our brush. And it's okay if it's a little bit transparent because both these colors, the quinacridone magenta and the ultramarine blue, are transparent colors. So it's perfectly fine that we're seeing the blue underneath. We actually want that. We just want to make sure that there are no harsh edges. I'm going to maybe get a little bit more pink for this part and put a little bit more pink in my purple and blend that down. Maybe add a little bit more white. White's opaque, so it makes the color less transparent. Clouds have many layers, so no matter how you want to do this, it's completely up to you. I'm just showing you how I would paint this. If you have a different technique you'd like to use, 
go ahead and use it. I'm not going to stop you. I'm not the art police. I'm just here to make your experience maybe a little bit more fun. Maybe you didn't know that different blues and reds didn't actually make purple. <gasps> School lied to you. <laughs> All right. We're going to stop it there on that part. If you look at your reference, there's a little bit of purple right down here in this picture. So we're going to mix up a little bit more purple, a little bit white. And we're going to add a couple of purple clouds right here. I'm going to wipe off my brush because I have a little bit too much paint. I just want a little cloud. And I'm going to use my finger again. Please make sure you don't have an allergy if you want to use your fingers to paint. And there's a little bit right here, a little baby cloud. Maybe there's some right here, a little bit in here. Now purple and yellow make a gross color when they're together. So if your yellow was wet for whatever reason, you're going to know because it's going to turn a weird brown color. There's a little bit of purple here. A little bit of lighter purple. Okay, and there's definitely some purple right down here, so I'm going to make a lighter version. Maybe a little bit more on the pinky side of the purple. Oh yeah, there we go, a little bit more white. And we're going to make this purple cloud that fades into a light pink. This is why I like mixing my own purple because I could vary it pretty easily by just adding either more pink or purple to my color mix. And there we go. Clouds in the regular shape, which is what we want. Perfect. All right, let's get back up to the top. <laughs> and we are going to add some purple up here, a little bit more blue in there. If you notice your paint getting sticky and it's not blending the way you want it to, it means it's drying and with acrylic, just let it let it dry. You don't want to fight against sticky paint because it's, uh, it's just going to lift right off of the canvas, like all of the layers. <laughs> and you've worked hard so far and I don't want you to lift all the paint off your canvas. So we're just going to keep blending. We're going to leave an opening for where the blue is. Kind of like this. I'm just going to outline it. There we go. Now a little bit more purple, less white. I'm just going to get this top corner here. Down, 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 leave some of the blue showing. It's fine, you want that. And don't worry, we'll go over it again because there are some darker spots of this purple, so they will need two layers because again, the quinacridone and the ultramarine blue are pretty transparent colors. I'm adding a little bit more white here. I'm going to wipe my brush off, get some of the paint off. And I'm just going to start blending it into this pink section. I want a nice soft edge here for the transition. That's why I wiped off my brush. There we go. Add some more purple clouds. We're just going to keep adding our purple clouds until we are happy with them. Oops. And once I'm done with an area, I'm just going to let it dry. If I want to tweak some stuff, see I took off too much blue here, but I'm just going to let it dry first. Because paint that's already drying is going to be super hard to work with. So we're just going to let it do its thing. Grab some more white. Blend it in here. I'm 
add a little bit down here, but we're going to add some more white and we're going to make our purple more towards the pink. And we're just going to add a little bit here. There we go. And again, I'm not worrying too much about here. I just wanted a little bit of color down here because I will be adding some buildings, maybe some trees. I'm not sure yet. I'll decide when I get there. Grab some more purple. I'm gonna put a little bit more here. Scrub, scrub, scrub. I don't have a lot of paint on my brush. This is why I'm able to do this. If I had too much, it would just be a hot mess. There'd be way too much paint to move around. So you don't need a lot of paint on your brush for clouds. I know I'm repetitive, but I wanna make sure that we're all on the same page here. All right, so layer one of the purple clouds is done. I'm gonna rinse my brush and I'm gonna add a little bit more blue back into it. I hope you guys are liking this so far. Leave me some comments down below of what you'd like to see next or done differently. Put some more light blue on my brush and I'm just going to bring some blue back into this section. So I'm just going to scrub very lightly, add some blue back in. The more layers on a painting I find it looks better anyways so it's fine. The more you do this it's just going to get better and better. There we go. That's very pretty. Add a little bit more blue down here. Oh, too much paint on my brush. I'm going to wipe it off. Grab a little bit more blue. And just add that right back in. There we go. We can add a bit more blue here. Some more down there. A little bit in the pink here. Very nice. All right, and guess what? We're going to dry it again. We want to make sure this is dry before we add the next layer of purple so that we don't pick up the paint. So let's dry it and meet me back here. Oh, I forgot to turn off my air dryer. Sorry, guys. Now that it's nice and dry, we are able to do another layer of our purple clouds because again, some regions are a little bit darker on our reference image. So we just wanna make sure that we capture that. So I'm gonna dry off my brush, wipe off the excess water. There we go. All right, so let's make a purple again. We're gonna pick up from the sides. Don't go directly in the middle. That's really hard to manage your paint that way. You're going to waste more than anything. So there, I'm going to add less white this time, maybe even no white. And I'm going to look at the darker part. So right up here, there is a darker cloud. I'm just going to put that in. Scrub, scrub, scrub. There, there's some over here. Maybe we'll add some on top. And if your colors don't match mine exactly or your clouds are in different spots, that's fine. That's fine. That's totally fine. If you like how it looks, leave it. This is your painting. I want you to be happy with it. You can pause, take some screenshots if you want to copy it exactly, but they will look different no matter what. Even if I were to repaint this, my painting would look different than what it looks like right now. And again, I'm varying the purples, like some are more blue, some's more pink, and that's completely fine too. Oh, there's a hair on my canvas. If that happens to you, just uh, pick it off. Or leave it in, you know, it could be a little memory of your pet. <laughs> Add a little bit more dark here, and a little bit here, 
just look at your reference and decide where you want to add some darker clouds, where you want to add a different color if you're like missing something. Okay. I'm going to make a more pink purple and I'm going to add quite a bit of white to it. And I'm just going to touch it up down here and make some random clouds. I want to put a little bit of purple here. It's not on the reference, but I am choosing to do it. Add a little bit of white, plop it on, wipe off my brush, and blend lightly. All right, I am liking where this is going. I'm very happy with it. So I'm just gonna keep messing with the purple clouds. And again, you can do this layer as many times as you want. If you want to add 17 layers of purple clouds, you go ahead and add 17 layers of purple clouds. No one is stopping you. If you don't want to add purple clouds at all, that's also up to you. It's looking pretty darn good if I do say so myself. Now I am noticing that there is some more pinky purple inside of our purple cloud so I'm going to mix up um, pink mostly pink just like a smidge of blue and a little bit of white so that it's not so transparent and I'm going to add a little bit of this pinky color in just a certain area certain areas uh, sorry it's hard to talk and paint at the same time <laughs> just in certain spots it doesn't have to be everywhere just some pink peeking through uh, maybe a little bit down here a little bit more white and uh, my brush is starting to feel sticky so I'm just gonna rinse it off I don't want the paint to dry on it so if your brush is starting to feel like it's not moving around as well, just rinse it and dry it off and just reload your paint. Some more of this pinky color. Add some maybe over here. Whoops. All right. I am liking how that's looking, so I think let me just take a look at it. Sometimes it's a good idea to take a step back and look. All right, so now I'm looking at it from a little bit further back and I'm not really liking this situation here. So I'm just gonna work on it a little bit more. And the reason I personally don't like it is because there's a hard line here, a hard line here, and a hard line there. And I feel like it's not flowing properly. So I'm just gonna rinse my brush and I'm just gonna play around with that a little bit more and that's completely fine. I'm also, you know what, I'm gonna switch brushes to show you that you can do it with different tools. You don't need the exact same one. And I'm going to use a smaller, again, it is a scruffy brush because I will be scrubbing. Uh, is it focusing? There we go. So I'll use this. It is a tiny little brush. And I'm just going to use it to refine this middle section here. And my paint looks like it's starting to dry, so I'm just going to mist it again lightly. I think I got this little spray bottle from the dollar store, honestly. <laughs> so I'm grabbing some yellow and some white. More white than yellow. All right. And I'm just going to work on refining this little part here. So I'm going to break up the line there we go. And break up this line. I'll list the exact materials that I'm using in the description box below, but you can do this with literally whatever material you want. You don't have to go out and buy a bunch of stuff to paint this tutorial. Just use what you have. We'll add a little bit more white yellow down here. A little bit over here. A 
You can take some over the top of the purpley pink over here so that it makes a cloud look like it's being pushed back. Okay. We'll add a little bit here. We'll be going this way to break up that line. We'll add some down here. Again, I'm using cadmium yellow medium and titanium white, but you use whatever yellow you like. And make sure again that you test your purples before you put it on your canvas because I don't want you to end up with a muddy sunset. That's not fun when that happens. Add a little bit more white over here on top of this one. We're just adding layers. Okay. Maybe a little bit more of a white color here. I'm going to wipe off my brush. Clouds are so much fun, you guys. You just scrub, scrub, scrub until you're happy with what you see. So I'm going to stand back again. And I'm starting to like that a little bit more. I want a little bit more pink here, and I want to fix this edge. So I'm going to rinse off my brush. Dry it off. I don't want it soaking wet. And I'm going to grab some light pink. And I'm just going to add some of it. A little bit darker than what we had originally. I'm going to wipe off my brush so that it's easier to blend. And we're just going to break up this little edge here. And your yellow doesn't need to be dry for you to put pink on top because it'll just turn it orange and that's fine. There are orange colors in a sunset. Add some up here. Maybe some down here. See, like I have a reference image and that's exactly what it is. It's a reference. You don't have to copy it exactly. I'm adding some light pink over here. If you want to copy it exactly, that's totally fine. I like to use it as a guide to see what I want to do with it. And if I feel like I want to copy the exact, exact thing, I would grid to make sure all my colors are in the right spot. But I'm just doing this for fun. Just make it a nice sunset, lots of clouds. There we go. Maybe add a tiny little bit of some pink down here. Just some little specks. Boop, 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 boop. Don't be afraid to get your brush in there. Now blend this a little bit. Scrub, scrub, scrub. It's casting a shadow. My setup will get better, guys. I don't have an office right now. <laughs> and there we go. Let's check it. Stand back. All right, I'm liking that. I might do a little bit over here. Uh, let's do a little darker version of pink. Right, right here. Add a little pink cloud over here. There we go. Maybe while we have this color on our brush, we can put some in the purple clouds again. Just some little wispies. If you look at the clouds, they're not perfect. There's little bips and bobs all over the place, so don't stress. It's fine. All right. I think that's looking pretty darn good. So I'm going to stop messing with my clouds for now. I might decide to mess with it later. <laughs> And now I'm going to show you guys how to add, uh, I decided I wanted to add trees, I think, instead of buildings. So what I'm going to do is, let me find a brush here. Sorry, one second. A brush that I like. Uh, maybe this one. <laughs> Excuse all the noise. I'm trying to find my favorite little tree brush.
Okay, that's fine. I'll just use this one. All right, so I'm going to switch to a small round brush. So it's pointy like this. Okay. And instead of using, uh, putting the buildings, I'm going to add some trees instead. I'd like to change it up and you're allowed to do that. If you want to add the buildings, I will provide a traceable so that you can just go ahead and trace it on. I'm going to switch it up to trees though, so we're going to do that. And in our reference, it looks black, but I'm not a fan of using the black pigment because they all have undertones and I find that this purple is pretty dark. So this is when the dioxazine purple comes in. If you don't have this, pick your darkest purple. You could pick pink, blue, whatever color makes you happy. You can use black. I'm just going to show you how to do it with this color. So I'm going to load my brush and make sure you don't want like a big blob like this. Okay, this is what we're avoiding. So I'm going to offload my brush by pushing down and twirling. I want to make sure that when you use a round brush, that your paint is a little bit more fluid. So if you have craft acrylic, use less water. I'm using heavy body paint, so I'm going to thin mine down a little bit. And I'm going to avoid touching this purple because this yellow and purple together um, makes a really gross color. There we go. So this is what my brush looks like. And I'm just going to add a tree line. So I'm going to pick a spot. Uh, maybe I'm going to zoom you guys in one second. I'll give you a different angle on this. All right, I zoomed you guys in. Um, this is the middle of the canvas. I'm going to put my first tree a little bit off center. And what I'm going to do is just draw. Oh, my hand is shaky because my phone's in the way. Draw a little line right down the middle. Right, it doesn't need to be perfect. I'm going to cover it. This is just to see where my tree's going to be. I'm grabbing a bit more paint. And I'm going to do little taps for the top of the pine tree. And then I'm just going to move downwards. I'm going to avoid making a triangle because that won't look natural. Trees aren't little triangles in the forest. So I'm just gonna do little taps down the trunk, making my branches all different shapes. They don't have to be perfect. You can put some pointing down, some pointing up. There we go. Get some more paint. Just all these little dabs that I'm doing. I'm just going to make my way down. You can leave some spots blank. Some dots don't even have to be connected. You can point them downwards. Trees are fun as well because they're all different. No two trees are going to look alike. So just have fun with it. Fill it up all the way to the bottom. We're going to do a second coat because this is looking pretty transparent and I want it to look more black than purple. So we'll be doing a second coat. And I'm also going to show you that you can do it with a different brush if you don't have a round brush. So I'm going to rinse it out. And we're going to pick up, uh, let's see here. This is an angle brush. It's also scruffy because I use it for trees quite often. And I'm just going to use this brush dry. And load up the paint. This is what it looks like. There's not a lot of paint on my brush. And we're going to do the same thing. We're going to do a line. Um, with an angle brush, when you do a line, you want the long end to finish the stroke. So I'm putting my brush down like this. So I'm going to put it beside this tree. And they're not all going to be the same height, so maybe we'll make this guy a little bit shorter. Now I'm going to use the point of the brush to do pretty much the same thing. Just some taps. There's not a lot of paint on my brush. Whoops, that was too much paint. And just do some little taps 
all the way down. You can turn your brush sideways if the tip's not working out for you. Fill it in. All right, there you go. I'm also going to show you one more brush. If I could find it. Alright, this will do. This is a um, another round brush, but it's smaller. It's more pointy. This is personally my favorite brush to do trees with. You can use a fan brush, literally whatever brush. I'm going to do one more close up and then I'll zoom you guys back out. So let's add uh, maybe another little small guy over here. I'm going to make a line just as a guide. And then I'm going to add some little dots. Make some little branches. I'm not putting a lot of pressure on the brush. There we go. All right, we're getting there. All right, I'm going to zoom you guys back out. All right, so we are zoomed back out. And I'm just going to continue this, variating the heights. Some are shorter, some are taller, some are thicker, some are thin. Add a little bit more water to my paint. So just keep doing this until you're all the way through. I might fast forward this part for you guys. Now keep in mind that this is for beginners and people who maybe have never painted a sunset or a tree in their life. So I'm simplifying this quite a bit. And let's add another little short guy in here because it's looking a little bit bare I'm finding. I want this to be a nice tree line. So we'll just add a little buddy in here. There we go. Now they're almost the same height, so I'm just going to make this one a little bit taller. So your eye notices patterns, so if all your trees look the same, that's the first thing that people are going to look at. There we go. Fill in the gaps. Maybe a little guy poking in here. Boop, 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 boop. Just have fun with this part. I also want to show you something, okay? Let's say you make a mistake. Acrylic paint is forgiven. Like forgiving, I mean, not forgiven. Uh, let's say I uh, accidentally dropped my paintbrush right there and you're like, oh no, I ruined my painting. No, no, no. While it's still wet, just grab a little piece of tissue, put some water on it, and before it dries, you can just wipe it right off. There we go. It's like it never even happened. And let's say you didn't notice for some reason and it did dry on you, um, you can just paint right back over it. That's the fun part of acrylic is that it does cover, it dries fast, so unlike oil paint, you don't have to wait a whole week before you can fix a mistake. You can fix stuff in acrylic. So don't feel like you're stuck. Oh, there's my favorite brush for trees. I found it. All right, so we'll just keep doing this until we are happy with it. Maybe we'll make a tall guy over here. Super tall. A little bit more water on my brush. It's not flowing. 
So I'm just doing little dabs, little brush strokes, varying the pressure. I am making it smaller at the top and wider at the bottom, but I'm not creating a perfect triangle. And again, if you don't like one of the trees, it's all good. You can fix it later. The more random you make them look, the more realistic it'll be. Obviously, there's no purple trees in the nature, <laughs> but this is a sunset, so you would get some reflective lights, and when we do the second coat, it'll look more black. So this is like a silhouette. And the reference is buildings. I'm aware um, making squares is not that difficult. So if you'd like to add buildings, go for it. I just want it to... There we go. Add a little bit more water to my brush. Maybe we'll make a little buddy right over here. I'll fast forward this for you guys. Or maybe I could tell you more about color theory <laughs> or about the Facebook group. So I have a Facebook group where I auction off my paintings for charity. So I put up my original paintings up for auction and 10% of the proceeds go towards the charity that we're doing for that month or that time period. So right now, if you're watching this in July of 2021, we are donating 10% of the proceeds to the Timmins and Area Women in Crisis. So that's the Facebook group. There's auctions. There's some little updates about what I'll be working on next. Uh, you guys get to vote on what kind of painting you'd like for the charity auction pieces. Um, I also post commissions in the group and people vote on stuff they'd like to see what kind of painting you want to do next and if you'd like to join i will post a link in the description down below it's called samantha by design and it's a lot of fun in there there's quite a bit of participation if you do live in my area which is uh timmins <laughs> i also do some stash and dashes um there's a lot of giveaways and I like that you guys get to have an opinion and an input. It's fun for me that way because I know what you guys want to see. So I'm just going back over these trees that I know are dry and I'm just darkening up some spots. I'll also link uh, my social medias. <laughs> I am on TikTok, believe it or not. That's fun. I love TikTok. I'm on Instagram as well so I'll post those is down in the description too and again the setup will get better as I go this is my first tutorial <laughs> films I've done a little bit of paint nights in my area it's a lot uh, easier to teach in person when you're not a very techie person <laughs> I'm not very good with computers. So I'm just tapping, variating the heights, filling in some spots, leaving some spots blank. Next time you're out in nature, just take a look at the tree line. There we go. We'll add another one over here. Maybe we'll make this one a little bit shorter. They don't have to be completely straight either. Trees aren't always standing upright. Some trees are falling over. Some trees are crooked. No biggie. My biggest tip is just to not have too much paint on your brush. This is where a lot of beginners go wrong. You try to put as much paint on your brush because you think it's going to cover an area faster, but it just ends up making a mess. So we're just going to 
fill this out all the way to the end maybe we'll make this one a little bit taller than the rest over here there's some little dots little lines take it right off the edge of the canvas See, I got a little thick here and I don't really like that. So I'm just going to grab a little tissue with a bit of water on it. And I'm just going to wipe it away. Just going to wipe it right off. There we go. We pretend it never existed. Just add another branch. There we go. Just like that. I hope you guys are enjoying this so far. I'm having fun. I think it looks awesome for a beginner painting. Let me know in the comments what you'd like to see um, me improve. I am open to constructive criticism when it comes to filming stuff. I am fairly new at filming my paintings. I also uploaded a couple time lapses that I did recently of a few of my paintings that were up for charity auctions and for commissions. So you can find those on the channel as well. But I wanted to make this one real time. Wow, look how wobbly I got here. If you hear some weird stuff in the background, it's my cat. <laughs> She's running around like a crazy person right now. Just keep adding your trees. Go over some trees, that's fine. Again, you can make yours buildings, you can paint these black, you can paint them hot pink, blue, yellow, whatever color makes you happy. Maybe we lost this little tree here, so we'll just add another one. There we go. Add a little buddy back in. Woo, I threw my paintbrush again, jeez. Another little guy over here. My paint is skipping, so I'm just going to add a bit of water to my brush. If you guys have any questions, ask them in the comments. I'll be more than happy to answer them. And if you do paint this, I would love for you to post it in my group on Facebook. I really, really want to see them. And if you're watching just for fun and you're not going to paint this, that's completely fine too. I get it. I'll also be making more videos about color theory and how certain colors mix and understanding undertones and why you thought that a green and yellow would make a nice lime green but it turned out a weird olive green. I'll explain all that in other videos. Just let me know what you'd like to learn and we will work through all of it together. I am self-taught so I went through YouTube to learn as well lots of YouTubes and uh, here we are now five years later I started painting for mental health reasons and now I own a business <laughs> I've absolutely fell in love with it and I hope you guys could also fall in love with it just misting my palette I just want to take the guesswork out for you guys and make it super beginner friendly maybe we'll make some more advanced videos down the line so that we can progress your journey together. If the traceable is not in the description, it's because I fig didn't figure out how to do it. But if it is, I did it. <laughs> I'll do my best. I'm not a very computer savvy person. Make this tree a little bit taller. There we go. And we'll just elongate this tree because we are allowed to do that. It's art painting. Make this one a little wonky. There we go. This one a little shorter.
And then after this, we only have one thing to do left is add some little birdies. Sorry, that's my cat again. She's jumping around. And we'll add another super tall tree over here. I am bracing my pinky on the canvas for stability so that I don't end up with my palm in the wet trees. That's the cat. <laughs> Oh, the random dot on the side, we'll just go with it. Okay, we'll keep doing this. So yeah, let me know what you guys would like to see more of, less of. Do you want more real-time tutorials, more time lapses, some voiceovers maybe, live? Let me know so I could accommodate you to the best of my ability. More water on my brush because my paint's not flowing off like I'd like it to. There we go. Cover the bottom. And we'll add another tree over here. Guys, we are almost done. You painted this. I hope you're proud of your work. If this is your first painting ever or you are just a beginner, don't be so hard on yourself. If you guys could see in my first paintings I did, you'd be like, holy guacamole. I want you to be proud of your artwork. And if you want to sell your painting from this tutorial, go not sell it. If you want to gift it to someone, if you want to keep it for yourself, you do what makes you happy. There we go. Maybe we'll, mm, we'll add another tall-ish one to end our tree line. A little bit more water on my brush. Oh, too much water on my brush. Yeah, see it's making a little puddle, so I'm just going to pick it up with a dry paper towel. Take it right off the canvas. Okay, and then we are going to stand back and look at what we've done. That looks pretty great, you guys. I'm going to just add a little bit more purple in spots where I want it to be a little less transparent. So just go over it, same motion. Just add a little bit more purple. Maybe you want to tweak some trees. Maybe you want to add some trees. We're just going to make some spots a little less transparent. And this is a perfect example of how color works. So these purple trees are the same color as these purple trees. They just look more blue because they're on a, a cooler color, whereas these ones look more pinky purple. Even though it's the same purple, because they're on a pink yellow color. Isn't that awesome? Painting is so cool. It makes me super happy. There we go. I'm just gonna keep adding some purple. There we go. 
And these don't have to be perfect. If this is your first time painting trees, just be happy that you painted a tree and you did it. They don't have to look super perfect. They're trees. They could all be different. All right. I think I'm quite happy with these trees. I might fill in this little gap here. Okay, let's add a few birds. If you are not comfortable making super fine lines, maybe practice on a piece of paper first or leave out the birds if you don't want any. That's totally fine too. Completely up to you. Let me use this brush. I'm just gonna rinse the purple off of it. And now I will use black for the birds. I'm going to grab my black paint. And I'm gonna add a little bit to the palette. Just a smidge. We don't need that much. There we go. Now I'm going to show you that I am using heavy body paint, which means that it's not liquid like craft paint. So to make a thin line, I will have to add a little bit more water to it. Not too much. You don't want it to be super runny. Like I don't want it to fall off the palette, but I don't want it to be thick. Oh, what is that? Piece of lint. Get off my canvas. <laughs> All right, now we're gonna look at our reference. And there are little birds down here. So we are just going to add a few. Just tiny little birds. Brace your hand on the canvas. Uh, maybe I'll zoom you in. I'll zoom you guys in. All right, we are zoomed in and I'm going to go in the yellow part off to the side here and we want them to be very small. You don't want your birds to be bigger than the tree. So I'll make a little line like this and then another little line. They don't have to be little M's. And then I'll make a bird like this. Maybe this wing's going up. Okay. A little bird here. Okay, they don't have to be perfect. Your brain will do the work for you. Maybe a little V like that. Okay. Another little one here. darken this one a little bit. We'll add another one here. One like this. Okay. Maybe we'll add one that's a little bit further back. A little guy here. If you're getting thick lines, just thin out your paint a little bit more. Or leave the birds out completely. And if you don't like them, don't forget that you can just wipe them right off while they're still wet. And one more. Let's count them. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. That's my favorite number. <laughs> Maybe we'll add a couple more. All right. And those will be our little birds. And now let's zoom you back out. And there we go. Let's take a look. You guys, you painted this. Good job. I am so proud of you. You stuck it through the whole thing. If you have any questions, ask them in the comments below. Let's take a tour around the canvas real quick so you guys can see the texture and all the little streaks and the see-through and all the layers that we did. So let's take a tour around the canvas. All right. So this is what mine looks like. Yours does not have to be exactly the same. I'm just showing you so that you can see. I'll post the reference image so that you have a guide. And I'll also post a picture of this finished painting so that you can see where you're at. Remember that all our paintings are going to look different. And there you are. Congratulations. You created a beautiful masterpiece. You're an artist. Bye.